What's up gaming and phone fans? This is KJ Mullins of KJ Entertainment with my brand new channel, KJ Reviews. Today, we're going to be unboxing the Mochi i7s, a brand new gaming smartphone from a company called Snail, which happens to be a new company that hasn't been around too long, but they got a new product here I was really excited about. And before we get started, let's start unboxing. All right, it's already been opened. They have sent me a clear case here, clear silicone, which is really nice. Personally, I like the clear cases because I can still see how the phone looks. On top of that, they were nice enough to send me a tempered glass screen protector. Okay, let's get to the actual unboxing now. Here's the phone and some bubble wrapping right here. Alright, the phone comes in a very nice black box. Black is my personal favorite color, so I do like that. What we see here is the snail logo right here, where it looks like a snail, obviously. First, this phone right here does have the CPU of SMD 710 Octa-Core. That's a Snapdragon processor, mid-grade. RAM is 6 gigabytes. ROM 64 gigabytes, so that means 64 gigabytes of storage for your apps, games, whatever you want. The screen is a whopping 6 inch, 1920 by 1080p. That's 6 inches of 1080p on the screen, which is really good actually. The rear camera is 60 megapixels, front camera is 5 megapixels. It does come, you know, preloaded with Android 8.1. That's the operating system. It is upgradable. There is a dual SIM card slot in the phone. There's also a SD card slot. From my understanding, it goes up to 256 gigabytes of space, which is plenty for games. Everything else, mainly based on your towers and what your personal preferences are. Anyways, let's get to the actual unboxing now and see what this phone looks like. Very, very nice. Now just a heads up, when you unbox this, the phone is clipped in to the plastic case here and can be a little difficult getting out. I personally already have taken it out, so I have to go through that hecticness again, so it is already out. Here's the phone itself. The side and the back. We'll get back to it later. Before we get to the actual phone, let me show you what's inside the box. Right here we've got the instruction manuals. I always read the manuals, but that's just me. Right here, we got your brick for charging and a USB Type C, which is good, the new style. Now, I'm going to add this right here. Since this is coming from China, the inside of this box will most likely rip out due to the shipping and distance. Mine unfortunately did. It's not going to always happen, I would assume, but unfortunately, I was an unfortunate one. So, mine ripped out but it'll be okay personally i like to collect things but it is what it is all right phone is already charged so we won't need these so let's go ahead and put these up go ahead and put the case on the phone just like that nice and easy the thing I like about these silicone cases is they do have that nice rubber grip on them so the phone will tend to not slip out of your hands which is a good thing always a good thing wouldn't want to drop this phone and break it now let's go ahead and show off the phone itself okay so it doesn't feel cheap and light like most things it does got a little weight to it which is good Kind of like comparing a DualShock 3 to a 6-axis controller back in the PlayStation 3 days. The original 6-axis controllers did feel a little cheap, you know, compared to DualShock 3, but again, that's personal preference. The weight's not a problem to me. I like the weight. Okay, the buttons here and the D-pad are the portable gaming style clickiness. 
which is fine. The analog sticks here feel really good. Very similar to the Nintendo Switch. If not 100%, pretty darn close, but feel really good. Okay, right here is where you got your front facing camera. Here's your ear speaker. There's your microphone. I'm assuming they put the speaker right here on the left side because when you put the phone up to your ear, you do not want to put your ear in the center of the phone because the analog stick will irritate your ear. There have been reports on previous reviews where they have not liked how the analog stick is here and sticks into your ear, but it's common sense that the speaker is right here, so just don't put your ear over there. Okay, all right, up here we've got two L and R shoulder buttons. They are clicky, just like the buttons and D-pad are. Down here, we've got a headphone jack, or auxiliary out, USB Type-C, volume rocker, power button. Now, the one thing I liked about this phone was the actual speakers. Left and right, nice and loud, very good sounding. I do like the speakers, they're really nice. The only problem in my opinion is the fact that the speakers are put on the back of the phone instead of the front. That's my only complaint as far as the speakers are concerned. Now listening to them from the front and the back, they both still sound good, but hearing it from the front will tend to sound a little muffled. But they are in the back and they do sound really nice. There's your camera and there's your flash. Now I did check out the, uh, the flashlight on this phone. It is really good and very bright. A lot brighter than my other phone. I did once have an Xperia Play back in 2010, a Sony Xperia Play gaming phone, which I love to death. And I was very unfortunate how it didn't really succeed. And I was looking forward to another game phone after that. Nothing ever came about until I found this. So I'm very excited to be checking this out and seeing how good it is with games. All right, now that we've got the uh, phone out the way, by the way, there's the Mochi logo and company logo, Snail, right there. Why it's pronounced mochi, I have no idea, even though that's a Q, but it is what it is, if I'm even saying it right. Let's fire it up real quick. All right, you can turn this feature off, but if you tilt the phone, obviously, it will go into this mode or this mode, obviously. By default, you get a really nice background right here. There are three home screens here by default. Now, I will go ahead and say that this phone in particular is the Global Edition, which happens to be the one sold on Amazon. Global meaning it comes global friendly, meaning it works right out of the box, so you have no issues with Android in the Play Store. You can sign in your Android account with no problems. On previous reviews of this phone, I've noticed that their phones look slightly different. The uh, D-pad and the buttons are a clear black on the older reviews. I want to assume that what had happened was they got a non-global edition. So therefore, with them to sign up with Android and have their Android account on the phone itself, they would have to go through Android for authentication. With this being the global edition, there's no need to contact Google for Android authentication to get the Play Store to work. It works right out of the box. And how I know that? Because last night I took the time to download a couple of emulators here, a few actually, to test out. We'll do that here in a second, but first I would like to go through the phone itself to show it off. Nice speed here. Let me go ahead and hold it the way it's meant to be hold as a phone, like this. Okay, let's go over the phone real quick and look at it. Right now it's currently 6.23 p.m. Nice, nice. Like I said, three home screens here. There's your Play Store, obviously there's your default. Nothing you know, different than your average Android phone. Okay, this is 8.1, still good. Again, upgradable. Let me show off the flashlight real quick. Very bright, as you can tell. And on a side note, if you notice, when I turn the flashlight on, the case seems to be illuminating on the edges, which makes it look really nice, actually. I've not noticed that until right now. But it looks really good. And you can see how bright the flashlight is, actually, just by seeing how bright it is while the room is lit. 
All right. Again, it's an Android, so I'm not going to explain how to operate an Android phone. That's completely up to you, and that's obviously not what we're doing right now. We're actually going to be explaining the phone itself and the benefits of it being a gaming phone. As far as explaining how Android works, I'm sure you already know that. Okay, now, there have been past reviews on this phone already explaining all the emulators, what the phone can handle, the strongest it can handle, the weakest it can handle. All that's already been covered, so I'm not going to go through every emulator. What I will do is this, though. I will play what I felt is the most powerful emulator and retro console the phone can handle, and I will also play the console where it has little hiccups. Now, from my personal experience, the ReDream app, which plays Dreamcast games, pushes this to the limits. You can compare the ReDream specifications to the PPSSPP, which plays PSP games. They're around the same level of performance. There have been debates on which system has been stronger between PSP versus Dreamcast. It's an argument never ending online from my research, but I will go ahead and say that I'm a personal Sonic fan, so I'm going to review, explain, and sample the ReDream to show off Sonic. Sorry, PSP. All right. And on top of that, we were also going to go to the Dolphin emulator, which is what the phone and specifications P can reach at and the strongest it can reach by testing Sonic Adventure Part 2. So yes, we're going to be testing Sonic Adventure 1 on Dreamcast with ReDream and Sonic Adventure 2 on the Dolphin emulator, which happens to be GameCube and Wii. And that's where we're going to end the video to see the performance between the two games. There's that. Let's get some Sonic going now. Sonic Adventure. Nice and smooth. Now you notice I have the FPS up here on the top left. Just make sure that it's staying at a steady 60, which it is, and it has on my last testing of this. I'm gonna go ahead and let the full opening play so that you'll notice there's no hiccups and no glitches and it looks precisely just like the Dreamcast. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it up some. Again, if you turn the phone around, it'll sound a little bit more clear because the speakers are on the back. Still sounds good right here. A little muffled because the speakers are in the back. Again, I was kind of hoping the speakers would be in the front. And another heads up I forgot to mention earlier, the select button is down here. And the start button is right there, but they are not actual buttons. They're on the screen. By pressing them, there is a vibration. All right, Sonic, stay still. You're a little fast there. Oh, by the way, just so y'all know, there is a new Sonic movie on the way, so be sure to check that out. All right, let's play some Sonic now. Turn it down a little bit. Yes, it does get pretty loud, so I did actually have to turn it down because it was kind of hurting my ears a little bit. I do have sensitive ears. As you can see, it's staying at a steady 60 still. But at the same time, I can't really skip this anyways. It will not let you, but that's fine. Now, if you hit the select here, it will fast forward. That's just the emulator feature.
personal preference. Alright, I'm gonna blow up the stage as fast as I can now. Just stay still on me, Sonic. That always happens right there. I don't know why. Y'all gotta admit that glitch was really cool, wasn't it? I could have sworn I was going to jump over that. Oh well. Alright, we are almost done, about to hit the finish line. So far the entire time, the game is very smooth. Keeping a steady 60 frames per second, which means that this emulator and phone can handle the Dreamcast emulator. Alright, that was a very successful test of the ReDream emulator for the uh, Mochi i7S, which can handle the Dreamcast emulator, ReDream, with no hiccups at all. Now, granted, the next emulator we're going to test is the Dolphin emulator, and we're going to be testing Sonic Adventure 2. Yes, it can run, but it does have a little issues running GameCube games, because the system itself was obviously stronger than Dreamcast itself, but that pushes the Switch limits. Now, before I get to that emulator, I will tell you the price in this phone. After tax and shipping and everything was about 450 something dollars, which is not bad. Granted, the shipping was pretty quick, but make sure you clarify that you are there at your address when you get this phone shipped to you because you will have to sign for it. I've actually had a hard time getting this phone because they've missed two different locations and they've misshipped the item to where it was supposed to go. That's not Snail's fault, obviously. <laughs> It was coming from Amazon, but the Snail is selling through Amazon as a third party. That was a DHL problem with their shipping. Alright, anyways, back to the emulator. We're going to go to Dolphin right now. We're going to play a GameCube game here, Sonic Adventure 2. We're going to call it a night. Just to show you what the phone can handle specification-wise on retro gaming systems. Now, we already know it can handle everything that's retro from Nintendo to Game Gear, Game Boy, and up, all the way up to... Dreamcast. Anything after Dreamcast will have hiccups from my personal experience. Therefore, there is no need to go through all the emulators which other reviews have already done. Now here's Sonic Adventure 2. You can even hear it's having hiccups right now. It's running at a steady nearly 40 frames per second. That's 20% less than the average 60, which is you know not good, but still playable. Oh, just so you know, this little icon right here is a screenshot icon if you want to screenshot the screen. 
This smoky icon over here. Key adapter, key kiss, operating kiss, much intelligent. Adapter skin, key combo. Sounds like it's got something to do with button mapping, but haven't messed with that yet because by default, the button mapping is already mapped really good. Alright, let's get to the actual game now. Let's skip that. Again, this game's not running that well. It is on the GameCube emulator. Now that right there is running fine at a steady 60 frames per second. Sounds nice. Now let's see how the actual game works. Okay, there we go. Wrong button. Hero or Dark? Well, always like Sonic better, so let's get Sonic going. Now, in case you're wondering about the buttons here on the screen, you can add those, you can remove those. I just decided not to at the moment since this is going to be a quick sample of the emulator. Personally, it's not my personal favorite emulator, so therefore I don't care about that. Just saying. Now, this right here is running really nice, actually. Nice and smooth. To be honest with you, it looks really no different than the uh, Dreamcast Sonic Adventure 1, in my personal opinion. Maybe slightly better in graphics, but not that much. That's just my opinion, though. Alright, once the game started rolling, now the frames have dropped down to about 40. You can hear the music skipping. Now granted I may could go in the settings and tweak the settings a little bit to get rid of that. I just choose not to due to the fact that again this is not really a personal favorite emulator. And also this emulator has been reviewed on previous reviews. But we already know that the Dolphin emulator does have issues on this phone already. It will not run it at 100% obviously. Alright, now I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off right now. The frames per second is actually messing me up on the game. But you get the idea. The game runs generally at 40 frames per second, 30 to 40, sometimes 60. I wanna say the game is playable, but it's 50-50. Again, the phone cannot handle the Dolphin emulator as good as it can handle the Dreamcast emulator. Just saying. Okay. Now that test is over. Okay, there's my intake on the Mochi i7S. We have tested the Dreamcast emulator and the GameCube slash Wii emulator to see what it can and cannot handle. Anything before Dreamcast handles flawlessly, obviously. You won't have any problems with NES to Game Gear to Game Boy, Super NES, etc., etc., which is fine. Now, with the hefty price of a $450 plus, is it worth the price? My answer is, if you're a retro gamer and you don't mind the hiccups on your GameCubes, then yes. But personally, I like the fact that I can handle Dreamcast and below because I would personally use this for retro gaming anyways because I'm a retro fan, clearly as you can see through here. But yes, that is the Mochi i7S from the company called Snail. They are a new company that have been around for quite a few years. They're trying to get distribution on this phone, so let's help them out with this review. Let's make sure let's get this phone going, make it popular up in the States. It's a very cool phone, nice speakers, nice flash, good camera and everything, but the main thing and the main focus of this phone is the fact that it is a gaming phone, which is great. So, again, this is KJ Mullins of KJ Entertainment with KJ Reviews, a brand new channel, signing out, saying I'll catch y'all next time. Peace out. Deuces.